um, I saw that right away, so I was able to, um, I lost, lost a signal or whatever, but, uh, luckily I saw that, so I was able to, to, um, start it up without, like, better than, like, if I had kept carving and not noticed it till 10, 15 minutes into it, but anyway, um, yeah, so we'll continue up where I got here, um, I forget where I was at, but, um, so we're going to go on this. Oh, yeah, I was saying that that sometimes people, we tend to um, uh, draw or, or want to draw or, or sculpt what we know instead of what we see. Um, and that's really uh, true for beginners. Often beginners will, will kind of want to draw something and, and they struggle with, with not being able to draw what they see. Instead, they're trying to explain what they know about it. And that, that really prevents them from, from just observing and, and capturing it how it actually is. And that, that usually plays out the most in foreshortening or, or those sorts of things where, um, you know, I used to teach, I, I taught for 13 years in public school, uh, art teacher. And that was like one of the biggest struggles for kids is like, you know, if, uh, we did a lot of lot, I used to put students in the middle of the class, uh, up on tables and we'd all, uh, draw, um, the student, you know, draw various live studies of, of the students. And, and whenever there was, uh, uh, something that was coming out towards them or any sort of, um, Force perspective was required. They always want to draw. They always want to explain that they knew that the arm was long, so they stretched it out off to the side instead of saying, "Hey, look at that! You don't really see that much of the arm. You just see it coming straight at you. Draw exactly what you see." And um, so that's 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 really important. And, and similar things happen when we're sculpting. A lot of times when we're sculpting, um, not only that does that happen. But we also uh, want to sometimes flatten things out. We're, we're hesitant to really dive into the into the material. Um, instead, we just want to go work from left to right and up and down and scrape a drawing of it onto the surface. Um, but this is not a drawing; it is a sculpture. So you wanna you wanna take advantage of that and work the dimension of the material. All right. So like like on the lid sometimes as you get further back into these corners it's not usually so crisp. It's not like you you draw the you know like point the you know top part of the lip and the bottom come to a point. Um you kind of let it, it it feathers back into sort of this little shadowy area. Yeah, when we cut the details in there'll be a, a little in intersection there that happens but it's softened up a little bit so i'm going to take this material out over here so that i could capture you know this little bottom i don't want him to have a big bottom lip so i am going to come in like that i would like to have like some double triple quadruple chins down here little wrinkles and make him Kind of happy and in keeping the the mouth in this sort of simple line it'll be really easy to animate this guy with some of those digital software that i talked about so so far we just used this tool and this is this is in the uh, triangle toolkit, but we we do also sell for those like these are the honestly the best tools. Uh, and I'm not, when I say the best tools, as far as for this type of material carving and stuff, I am I am like on, the best tools on the planet. Like the best tools available for sale in a set on the planet. Like I honestly, hands down. Um, now we do sell other tools that are, you know, that are more economy stuff, and and uh, generally it's it's this shape here that we're gonna look for. It's just some small little. These are these are um, ribbon loop tools, okay, and I'm just gently using them to scrape 
And I'm about to put this tool down in just a minute or so and move on to a different tool so that I can start to get some of those corners and a little structure. You know, I said to find round shapes there. Uh, well, I meant spherical shapes. You know, this obviously is a round, but you want to capture some spheres there. You want the depth, the roundness, um, because like I said, this is not a drawing. So the, the pouty part of that lip, you know, like the, is mostly on the, the center, on these medial areas where it's coming out in the middle. As you go off to the sides, it's going to, the planes of it are going to kind of meet. And that's where I said you get this little softening. You see how it's, it, it, you know, from this, from underneath the lip. Here, let me go in closer. There you go. Okay, so if you get them closer, the, um, this sort of dipping and shadows of this are going to blend into the same plane or similar plane and soften up so you don't see that much of a shadow. Because there's actually muscles that kind of come wrap around here. You know, you can, the more anatomy and, and, and muscle and spatial muscle structures that you build into these, um, it's, not, it, it'll begin to look, I don't know, sometimes it looks less enchanted or, or fun, you know, it just has, it gets too, um, I don't know, it just doesn't have too realistic, um, it, it's one of the reasons things like, you know, like Muppets or whatever. There's, there's a soft playfulness that, um, for me, it's important to, to know when to push, you know, depending on a type of character, you know, then you could start adding more stuff. But there's a, there seems to be um, a, a kind of fine line you want to draw for yourself um, as, you, as you're creating a character because it, it's, not, it's not always about, oh, get as much realism and detail in there um that might be counterproductive to the piece of art that you're creating you know this sometimes a real just uh somewhat simple structure created with intention will deliver a very magical sort of um feel for what you're looking for so don't always get caught up in how much how much uh, detail and anatomy you get in there. It's important to know that stuff if you want to push it for the character or, or keep little hints of things. All right. So I think that's enough with this tool. Now I could take the sanding sponge and kind of, you know, you want to be gentle when you do this because you could really just start erasing some of the stuff that you've, important little things you created but you can see how you just almost you could smooth this stuff up to look like a clay sculpture the material um the potatoes the squash the pumpkins this 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 organic material um is very forgiving so it hides so much little flaws, a simple little um, polishing up with with uh, a piece of material like, like this um, just smooths it out so much. It really you can really recreate uh, um, human flesh look uh, more so with. With, with the butternut squash and pumpkins, obviously the potato is, is probably all, but um, yeah. All right, so next tool we could use if we wanted to. We could jump into the, there's a triangle shape one. There's two triangle shape ones. There's a smaller one like this, and then there's a slightly larger one. Well, not slightly, it is larger. Where is it? It's this one here. Um, 
let me rinse it off. I got, I haven't pulled these tools out since, uh, I haven't used them since last October probably. So, and I'm not, yeah. Let's see. And this even has clay in it from, so I use these tools also in like the Chessy sculpture I just finished. I sometimes use these. So I did use this before last October. You can see it's got some monster clay on it. Um, yeah, these tools I use quite a bit um, beyond the pumpkin stuff and the potato stuff. So anyway, I'm going to use this. So I'm just going to use this tool real quick because then I'm going to jump to the smaller one. But uh, I'm going to, with this tool, I'm just going to get into some of these corners a little bit more to, to find this spherical shape of the eyes. You know, it's not just round. That's one of the things that, that uh, the biggest hurdles new uh, sculptors will have to get past is that you're not dealing with just a drawing even sometimes you get like really talented um artists 2d artists that try to sculpt and it's just sort of this this sort of letting go and diving into the thing it's almost like they got it it's it's a relearning to some degree all right so i'm trying I'm, I'm staying away from the center point and i'm trying to blend and push back all the sides to create a roundness. Now, I don't want to go in and create a really hard, hard roundness because, because I want to make some eyelids in here and I need some of that material to work with. Um, but I just want to get the general... And, I, and I, I avoid going too deep into here, into these areas here, because it's where the, uh, the skin of the eyelid is going to have to blend into the brow of the subject. They tuck a little bit more on the sides, you know, like, like, like your tear ducts tuck back into the little tight little corner here and the same thing on this lateral side. But it's this, it's this top part especially, uh, mostly because too, I, you're going to want that, you're going to want some material there in that area as you begin to, um, as you begin to like decide on the expression because the expression that he has now, I kind of already see the expression. It's kind of relaxed, goofy expression here. But if this were a sort of a little bit of agitated or angry expression, there's material here that I would want to leave as it would almost overhang, um, the muscle. So, so I try to just kind of, um, when I, when I'm, when I'm creating this spherical shape of the eyes, I, I don't, dive into carving away up in here because I know how it's going to be important to have that as I'm trying to like to, to you know create um facial uh, uh expressions and such but down here I'm gonna and see I got this cheek here so I'm gonna kind of like go a little and I'm not gonna use too much of this I need to get a I'm gonna use a smaller one but I'm just finding a little bit more of, of that roundness within that socket there. Same thing on this side. Now, I... Hmm. I'm going to go a little deeper. For for regular um, russet potatoes, it's, it can be difficult to do the eyes open, you know, like getting iris and pupil and all that stuff with just these tools. I'm going to show you in the next video later today on a, on a uh, sweet potato how to do that. Um, but for this one, uh, I just want to... I think I'm going to keep I keep these closed which means that I'm going to just sketch in uh, 
I'm gonna go back to this one for a second because I wanna capture. I went a little too deep right in there. So yeah, I can't add material, so I gotta push everything else back. And sometimes it looks best when that eye is pushed into the socket more. Now, this whole process I could have done, I could have been completed with this potato a while ago, but I'm trying my best to explain everything so that if you're new to this um you have a video on this channel that describes the whole process all these corners here i'm going to tuck a little further back really really reinforcing this edge of the cheekbone around the socket both sides Um, and then I think I'm done with that tool. Then the rest is going to be done with this small detailed tool and then uh, a little knife to pull out all the details. Here's a new cup that's going to be coming out soon. This is a steel tumbler and um yeah so it's an insulated stainless steel tumbler with that skull aviator on there and a signature and it keeps things cold or hot all right so all right so i'm going to the small tool now and I'm going to, so the lighting is really important here because as you're working on a potato, if you don't have the lighting right, it's hard to see what you're doing. The light just passes through stuff. Um, so you want to be able to have the light put in a certain way where you're able to see the shadows of what you're working on. So I'm going to do eyes somewhat similar to what you see back here on the sleeping guy on this guy. So I'm just doing a really thin line. I'm going to cut this in with a knife more, but so it's kind of like a very small, short from the tear duct, a little bit, just a slight bit up, and then a sweeping gentle curve to the side, like a little belly down line all the way to this corner. And I tuck it there. Same thing on this side is get in that corner All right and then we're gonna have a gentle line going all the way from corner down like that okay um the lower eyelid so like so like the eyelids you know like you should have like uh eyelashes we're not doing eyelashes on this thing uh but eyelashes often they'll cast shadows onto the lower eyelid so it makes the lower eyelid almost appear to be uh if you want to if you want the, you want the lower eyelid to be a little bit recessed at least i like for the lower eyelid to be a little bit recessed back so so it appears that um it's a little dark, slightly darker let's see if you see what i'm talking about And, and the bottom eyelid is going to be going down and in. So if, if you can imagine a sphere, it's the bottom part of the sphere. So none of it is coming this way. Um, it's kind of going into the sculpture. Granted, it's, gotta, it's going to meet with this. There's going to be skin that's, that's bringing, coming back out this way. And um, as, as it comes off to the lateral sides here, I'm going to have some little wrinkles indicating where they're making that transition and coming out so i'm not going to uh maybe i'll you see i go in there like this and i'm kind of using this tool holding this tool to bevel in so that from here to here is is at an angle that is casting a shadow instead of capturing the light 
And then as I come to the sides here, I'm going to soften that and blend it and let allow it to blend, allow those surfaces to kind of transition into each other, okay? And then you could take the tool also and just sometimes I like to just take a, you know, this is really small here, this area here, so I can't get too, too much stuff in there. I mean, maybe one little wrinkle. So I will uh, just carefully take the tool and softly carve a little line, bring it to the edge, and then as I get to that, that corner there, I'll come down, drop down and curve into imagine the volume of this, uh, you know, you kind of want to have that wrinkle flow across the structure that you've started there. Right? This is where the, the crow's feet or something or a little smile wrinkles would be, right? And that's really soft. Now you can leave, we're going to go, we're going to come back and do, take a knife to all this afterwards. But just giving, and, and there might be times where you want, you want the finished carving to be a blend of things that are that soft. Sometimes you might want to like accentuate that more and cut into it with a detail, but at least you have that there. And you're going to do the same thing to the other side. Well, let's, let's, let's do the upper eyelid now. Well, let's do this side first. So on this side, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come here and, and that bottom eyelid, we're going to cut some material away so it goes in. All right. Okay, um, all right, and then on the top eye, eyelid, let's, um, let's go in a little by the, uh, this corner part where they all meet, let's go a little deeper, and then he's relaxed, so we'll keep some We'll have his, just kind of his brow up here. We can maybe take this, go a little softer. I really want to show like corner words. This is where his eye brows would be. And we're not going to carve eyebrows. And like I said, the more little details you put on this and details, uh, more little detail and anatomical details you put on this, it just... It starts to look, it'll begin to look a little creepy or, or not, just not as cute. So we're just going to leave it just at that little relaxed brow up there. And maybe, maybe just a little hint of some... Some wrinkles on where it's meeting and that that's so subtle that that's mainly gonna be maybe this type of stuff all right um go a little deeper here all And let's get a little. Just trying to give a relaxed expression up there. And you could you can get all sorts of expressions and wrinkles into this, you know. 
Um, another thing I, well, we can just dip it in here, that works. Also, I used to have like a little toothbrush, um, to get in there and scrub various things away. So you see how, like, there's a round shape in there. Yeah, there's a lot of little um, lines and structures over it, but the general shape in there is round. It, it tucks down. The, the furthest point to us is in the middle. It's so important when you're doing eyes, whether it be on pumpkins, um, potatoes, clay, or, or whatnot. Okay, you want to go... And uh, here with this tool, we can get really, get deep in there. I think I want to, so if I, if I add a little snaggle tooth in here, it's going to make, make it extremely difficult to animate his face. So, um, and I kind of want to animate it. So um, I'm going to refrain from doing that. But if I would, like right now, like see we have a little, you know, this is where his, the opening of his mouth would be. Is going to be and like right here would be a good spot to put a little snaggle tooth, but we'll kind of come straight across there. I'm going to pull a little bit of material here because I want to make a little bit of a double chin here. So I'm just going to kind of come using the edge, this corner edge, gently scribe in, sketch in a line for that crease. And maybe go a little further so I can get one more crease below that. So now that I sketched in, I can come in with this and, and find it a little bit more. And I'll take a knife and really get it in there. And then I think I need a little more skin off. Got to make sure I don't go too low. My, my general preference is, not general, my preference is to be able to see the skin or the rind of whatever I'm carving all the way around so it frames up. And if I went too far down, I'd, I'd lose that. It's a big no-no for me. You know, when I was uh, even, yeah, it's sometimes I've made that mistake in my own carvings and and I hate when that happens. You know, I get too carried away with trying to capture whatever it is I'm carving, and I I keep carving, and then at the end I'm all I always regret when I try to when I compromise that it just loses a little bit of magic, it loses a little bit of charm of the material. Okay, 
Um, just a little bit here. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a sponge, this little sanding sponge. You know what I'm gonna try? So like I said, these were some sanding sponges that I used for the clay. I wanna see how they work on here. Oh, and they work great. Even better, actually. So these are just like little sanding sponges that you can get from, I don't know, I got these at the hardware store, True Valley or something, Ace Hardware. Um, and they're great because they could bend and get in little spots and they're not too, they don't leave a lot of debris or residue. It's not like you're using sandpaper. It's all little tiny sand and crumbs in there. Um, and you can rub and bring the stuff to a polish. So what I like to do is I like to hit the sculpture with my sanding sponge right before and after making the cuts, the final cuts. Um, so right before I'm, I'm going to take a little knife to this and cut in the details, but right before I do that, I like to go ahead and, and, um, just kind of go over the whole sculpture, make sure that I, that I addressed all the bigger forms that I want and, and any unwanted tool marks I could scrape off. But like I said, potato, potato well, all these perishable all these materials you know pumpkins whatever at this stage you want to be careful because you could easily scrape away some of the little fine nuances that um that you established that might be important you could also use them to like you know you could fold these up and really go in there and almost carve away um some other structures that you might want to car carve into, you know, or establish. See, this can go a little bit deeper, I think. So people ask about often, are you going to make another video or whatever? So um, here's your video. Um, and I wanted to launch today, but I didn't get around. I didn't have it done today, but there will be a Patreon page coming very shortly here, which will have additional videos. Um, but on this YouTube channel, if you search... If you start scrolling through this YouTube channel, as well as um, some inst my Instagram um, TV channel, Instagram uh, IGTV channel on Instagram, Bill Fain Studios, you will find plenty of uh, additional content on carving um, out there. But like I said, I don't know the biggest thing that I have to share on how to do this is to not worry about fucking up. <laughs> that is, that, that's key. That really is key. All right. All right, last step is going to be cutting in stuff with a knife. You see how that, that, that little sanding sponge just gave everything a nice soft feel to it, right? Um, so these triangle knives um, that are in the set, they are the mom, man. They are awesome for getting into all the little details. 
if you're not used to using sort of a knife like this, um, like you look at look at a knife, you think, okay, well, this it's like here's the cut. This is not the cutting edge. It's this spot up here, All right? So it allows for you to get into corners and really finesse stuff. All right, I'm gonna pull out just a little because I don't. All right, so I'm gonna get in those eyes first. So I want to, remember I said it was the upward, and then it went kind of down across into the corner. And you're making like a V cut. Really tight, or else you're gonna, you're not gonna get a really fine line, all right? And if it needs to be darker, you're just going to have to go a little deeper in spots. So I think maybe a little bit darker there. So I'm going to kind of come in. And this curved edge of this knife really allows for me to, to almost go in and tuck under and pull out. Whereas um, most knives wouldn't allow you to do that. And it's super thin super thin it's actually like the edge the end of it's thinner than an exacto um then i'm gonna come here and i'm gonna get this corner part and then i'm gonna stop halfway down again a triangle a v cut and that gives me a little darker shape there i'm gonna Come in here, in between those two, that wrinkle there, come around. Remember, I just sketched it in with that, with the um, with little ribbon tool. So when I, when you want a line not to be quite as harsh or dark, then you open up the angles of the V. Like this is a V cut, it's a double cut, right? So. I started off, I want this line that I'm doing right now, this wrinkle to be dark here, but on the, the end here, I want it to fade out. Like if you're doing a pencil drawing, it'd be a nice dark straight line and over here it kind of fades out. So I made that first cut, I went across, and as I came to the end here, I, I angled my knife and opened it up a little. So I'm gonna go to the top part again. Now, this could be really difficult. I'm um, not lying. Like, like sometimes it's like, I can't see where the hell I just made that first cut. You know, I, I kind of know where I did it and I could see where I sketched it in first. But um, the longer I talk right now, it's like harder to see where it was. But that's just the way it works. Like it's, it can be difficult to see where you made that cut. And, some, and to have the cleanest carvings, it's always nice when you make a cut and it, you pop it off and it comes off in one... Well, well, double, like, this is two, two cuts here to pull this piece out, but you don't want to keep redoing it, keep hacking it away to get, a, to get that piece out. So I'm going to make that second cut, and I'm going to come in here. Again, I'm going to go in a, a, a pretty tight angle, and then as I get towards the back of it, I'm widening and tilting my knife so that when it hopefully pops out, which... It's in there somewhere. Piece right there needs to come out. Fuck, I already got a whole bunch of cuts to make this thing come out. It's all right. This, this sort of finessing just takes practice, which means that it takes you messing it up. There's no way around it. Now, I made so many little cuts when I was going through it. A lot of little tiny pieces just fell out during the process. So it didn't come out in one little piece. But And you and there was times you could just take the, the knife and just rub and scrape it out. I mean, like, like grind little... You know, it's nice to have a clean cut, but 
when you get this small, sometimes it just comes, just drawing on the surface works with this material. Now you want, you want the eye, the actual opening, the crease from the actual eyelid, you know, opening to be the darkest one. So that's, I'm going to go back here and make sure that there's no mistake there, that this was, we understand that this is the opening to his eye and like, and like I said before the great part about this knife that curve allows me to go in there real deep and there we go and pull out slivers and leave a little overhang And this is just a potato. If you mess up, throw in a pot of boiling water and eat it. Um, on this top one, I don't like to, as I established that, I got what I got on this top one. I now see where I like it so I can go in and, and I'm just going to draw the lines that I, well, I'm going to reinforce what I had there. And, and I'm only like, I'm going deeper in some spots, not the whole thing. Now I'm going to come back because you want variation. You want, it's like you're doing, if you're doing a drawing, you want not every line to be like, well, maybe sometimes if you're an ink artist, you want bold lines, you know, same. Well, even when you're doing ink, sometimes you flare out a little wider and, you know, you finesse the, the line structure. But with this, you don't want every cut to be the same. So I went a little deeper there, I made it darker. And, then, and then here I want to create a little bit of a, I'm coming at an edge here. Notice the angle of my knife. I want I want there to be a nice highlight showing that leading edge of his top eyelid. It'll capture these are the little details that'll make a difference. So I want that leading edge of that that eyelid to really capture the light. So I'm holding my knife and I'm going to to push it into it gently. Like when you're getting this small of details and and lines close together. It's important not to make your cuts deeper than they have to be or else you end up cutting out an entire other wrinkle area that you needed, you know? So. All right, and then where are they went? So this tucks in here. And here where those, right where the corner where we were creating that spherical eye into the socket, that skin is, is, is uh, gathered up and creating little crow feet there. So we want to smile lines. We want to like tuck those in We can make some more in between coming out. And we're not just making like, you know, radiating straight lines. I'm really trying to have those wrinkles um, lay across the forms of the cheek and stuff. Thinking of volume and roundness. I'm just keeping it really... So, I'm going to go on to the other side. The angles that you hold this knife and the depths when you're getting into these details are so important. And I, it's really going to take messing up to, to, to finesse that. Like those dudes that get on a motocross bike and go jumping off ramps and doing flips on a motorcycle. Every single one of them that knows how to do it has crashed. That's how they learned. If they haven't crashed yet, then they're just lucky still. But you don't really learn until you mess up enough. So don't, 
don't define where you are at or what you're capable of by the fact that you messed up or whatnot. It's just part of it. I always, I have probably broke through accidentally more pumpkins than anyone else alive carving. I don't know, you know, I don't know. It's not a number I, you know, we could really find out if it's true. But I, I kind of believe that's probably the truth. And because of that, I also happen to be probably one of the top contenders for individuals who can carve into a pumpkin without breaking through. Because, I, I, because the depth of what I learned is based on the depth of fucking it up. <laughs> so you can't really, don't try to, don't, don't try to avoid too much the process of, of uh, the inherent process of failure that's tied into learning. Because if you start doing that with sculpting, you, you'll always end up with really soft sculptures that what you're too afraid to push the boundaries of something, they're really kind of just not going deep enough or, or, or just whatnot. For potatoes, it, it's um, luckily, uh, you can't really break through anywhere here, but you can not carve deep enough or not be confident enough to, to kind of push the figure or, or, or the whatever it is about the expression or whatnot um, far enough, you know? And that's not just, that holds true for everything in life, not just fucking carving. But it doesn't make, and, it, and unfortunately it doesn't make it any easier in those areas that we have resistance to. Like, so like, everyone has things in their life that they want to get better at, but they're too afraid to dive into it. There's not a single one of us that, um, that has their shit together all the way in all the areas that they want to learn something. It's like, it's not, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be human. It's, um, But, you know, the fun part is the thrill of overcoming that. And so you wouldn't want to erase it from the experience. It's like if you got really good at something and, you, and, and say you wanted to explain to someone or you wanted to write a book or make a movie about the process of it because you're so proud of it, you wouldn't, you would immediately want to reference the struggle part, <laughs> because it's tied into it. It's, they go hand in hand. Like no, like everyone wants to live an exciting life, but no one wants the things that require it to become exciting. <laughs> That's why it's, it's just easier to watch a movie <laughs> and then live a boring life. Sacrifice and struggle are required. Okay, so let's see. All right, in the right. So I, you know, this is um, this this video doesn't allow for me to fine tune the lighting that much, but when I take finished photos of this and video of it, um, some of these details will show better. So I'm trying again to get into the main crack of the eye and allow for it to be the darkest part of all those wrinkles. All right, in the mouth, I'm going to go in deep here, and this will really pop out nice with a cut line in there. So a V cut, coming in across, doing the top one down first. Hope, make sure I'm holding the angle to hug the established planes that I wanted. Okay. And then the second cut, 
is going to come in at a lower, at a different angle to accentuate the bottom lip. And you, know, you, kind of, you kind of like move the knife across to follow the forms of what you've carved in. And then hopefully it comes out. All right. And then you can just fine tune that come in here. And I'm going to, remember I said the corners. I like for the, I like this under part here, this little pouty part here is most prevalent here in the front leading edge. And then as it gets closer to the corner, it just fades away. It just fades away. You can like have a little indication, a really soft line, you know, of of where, like if where would the pink of the lips at really truly end. But it just kind of, it's definitely not as, as um, dramatic as it is in this leading part. And the same thing on this side. And then I can take that sanding sponge and kind of refine that there. Um, and go a little deeper here. And a little deeper here. And then I'm gonna dip this in lemon juice. Whoa, shit. You gotta be careful. Oh, like you, I have to be careful. Like when you take this, all these little cuts here. Some of these wrinkles are just little things hanging on. <laughs> so I don't want to like. I almost took the brush and just started going like that, and that would have just tore the stuff apart. Right now, I just dipped this in, into uh, lemon juice, so um, the details are some of the details are filled with liquid, which <laughs> makes it difficult to see <laughs> see those details. So as the liquid dries out or evaporates out of those little fine areas, it'll start coming to life a little bit more. You'll see it more. But yeah. That's essentially how to carve simple structures onto a potato. Um, again, this is a really simple design. Good for beginners. Uh, but I'm, gonna, I'm going to create a more complex one with different elements um, in this guy. So, and I'll take some photographs of this and I'll also talk about, I'll make some content describing how best to photograph some of these things. Sometimes materials like pumpkins and potatoes, because of the translucent nature of it, could be a little bit more challenging to photograph. Um, so I'll explain some of the secrets, not, to, I no secret, like I said, I don't have any secrets. Some of the techniques or things that I've discovered that seem to work best. And unfortunately, they don't always work best for like, um, for like, like me, like right now I'm trying to, you know, I'm doing this little video of trying to explain stuff. So I need to, it's important to have this whole area lit up so you can see things that I'm doing outside of stuff. Um, and that lighting often uh, compromises the ability to photo to see this with clarity. Um, so sometimes after I finish videos like this, I'll rearrange all the lighting to take some sort of beauty shots because the beauty shot lighting is definitely different from the lighting that needs to be uh, done to implement and see the whole process. So I'll, I'll, I'll create some content explaining that as well. Anyway. There you go. So this guy here um, can be pickled in a jar of white vinegar and will last years. Like I said, this guy, I believe, is going on eight years. He's over seven years old, uh, old carving. Um, 
Matter of fact, I'll show you right now. So I just changed out. He's not, I haven't had him sealed in this jar. He wasn't a sealed jar for many years. Um, but I, right, right now he's been just sitting, the, I just had something over it. Um, and then just before making this video, I, I rinsed out the vinegar. Right now, actually, just water in there. I'll put vinegar in there in a little bit. But you could see, um, let me take, see if I could take him out. He is amazingly um, pretty firm. I don't want to touch his face, though, because I'm pretty certain that his face will. So, again, this carving, this was done before. So, we did a show many years ago sci-fi channel called carvers prior to doing this show they wanted to do some giveaways um so we carved some potatoes this was the first potato that i ever carved and um threw them in vinegar at the time we were getting ready to do a show a big event in hong kong where we were gonna it was the first time i pickled any sort of carvings and we pickled uh oh god i don't know how many pumpkins we carved over the course of that uh, event and we pickled them in vinegar and it was a learning experience and a little while ago i talked about uh the willingness to fail in order to learn how to do something and there were certainly challenges in that one you know and and um i, I am <laughs> i tend to jump into things sometimes and i'm willing to fail even if it's going to be in the spotlight or on you know like in real time like like life itself is it's a one-time thing so you know like it's only so much uh i mean it's nice sometimes to do trial runs and practices and stuff but there's something to be said to believe in something and just do it in real time knowing that even that is you know like like, like being ahead like being on the leading edge of whatever it is that's being discovered if you really truly want to lead that and 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 find out about it and discover it for yourself and for others Sometimes it just means, you know, hey, everything's an experiment at some point. Step up and do it. So we, we went ahead and, and I we went to Hong Kong and, and for this big job pickling all these pumpkins. And I mean, I let the client know that, that we hadn't really done it before. We did a really, you know, they reached out to me probably in I think like April or May about the job. So pumpkins weren't even in season. Um, so I, I carved up a, uh, butternut squash. I didn't even carve it like into something recognizable. I just like really made, I made just strategic cuts that were symbolic of things that a regular, like little thin areas and just, I, I, I did some graphic stuff on it. Um, and then threw it into vinegar to see how it would hold up over the course of a couple of months because the, the show was just going to be a, a few months long anyway. And after a couple months, the 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 carving still looked like it did when I carved it. So I assumed that everything would be fine, you know. And I explained to the client that, you know, because we were we were exploring how to do this show. We didn't know, you know, and um, uh, so we we moved forward with it. But there were a lot of other, you know, if any of you have have, have messed around with um, pickling carvings, you know, you realize this. There's so many things that were overlooked, like pumpkins float, you know, and you putting these things in a tank and trying to keep them held, you know, held down. They, even if you hollow them out and put vent holes, even the cell structures within them still want to float. So there's no just hollowing them out so that the cavities fill with the vinegar is not enough. And then depending on what you try to weigh it down with might interact with the vinegar so there were needless to say there were tons of things that we learned about through that job and and uh we learned in real time like you know, on a real job not like you know uh not like practice and stuff and uh, but anyway it was great it, it, it showed still was a success despite you know um the the things that we you know the obstacles and struggles that we learned with and um 
yeah, it was, it was, it was the road to learning all the little nuances of how to pickle better. And even today, to this day, there's, there's little things that, that could be refined, but, you know, um, uh, or probably tested or whatever. Um, but yeah, uh, this guy's been sitting in white vinegar for, like I said, almost eight years now. So I would say that's somewhat successful. Anyway, so that's how you'll preserve something like a potato. All right, so I'll take a little break, and then I'm going to, later I'm going to carve a sweet potato. Put this guy in the lemon juice. Thank you.